Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about yet another unusual, strange and mysterious black hole somewhere out there in our universe. But this time it's going to be a black hole that beats a lot of records. It is the brightest and also the hungriest or the most ravenous black hole we've discovered because it emits a tremendously bright light, brighter than the galaxy around it. Let's talk about this object and welcome to What The Math. I guess by now most of you have probably seen this image. This is M87, the ultramassive black hole, approximately 55 million light years away from us. And this one became a record holder because it was the only black hole that we were able to um, create a picture of from a tremendously large distance and also of a tremendously small point in the skies. But unfortunately, even though it's very massive, it's not really that bright. As a matter of fact, its brightness is actually quite large, but you can still see the shape of the galaxy around it, and you can also still distinguish a lot of other features. As well as, of course, the super long astrophysical jet that it emits that's approximately four to 5,000 light years long. In other words, even though it is pretty bright, it's far from being the brightest, and it's definitely not absorbing as much mass as it could. Now, when it comes to mass absorption for black holes, there's a term called Addington limit. And that's the term that refers to the idea, the theoretical idea, of a kind of a limit of any massive body to have luminosity or to have actual radiation pressure before it becomes too much and starts being more than gravity, at which point the object should just fall apart. For every black hole, Addington limit is well known, and there are some black holes that seem to be really at the extremes of this limit. And today we're talking about one such black hole that's so massive and so bright that it seems to defy all logic and understanding of black holes. As a matter of fact, it might even be pushing its Addington limit to the limit. Now, initially, this particular object was discovered uh, in the mid of 2018 by a group of scientists whose paper you can find in the description below. And when they looked at it, it sort of resembled a typical quasar. In other words, a very, very bright object far, far away that seemed to emit a lot more light than it should. But the thing about quasars is that very often they are very difficult to distinguish from regular stars. As a matter of fact, when you look at their spectra, which they do provide in the paper, it sort of looks like a typical cool dwarf or a cool star. In other words, a star that's not too hot, not too warm. It also is not emitting any radio waves, so it doesn't really look like a galaxy with a black hole almost at all. Now, there's a reason for that. And the reason is that it's really far away. And at this distance, the light is really redshifted. It becomes more and more reddish, as you can see right here, compared to the galaxy that's a lot closer. In other words, because of the distances, what would be blue would appear maybe yellow or green or even in infrared light. And so because of the distances here, they were able to estimate that this galaxy is close to about 12.9 billion light years away from us, suggesting that it was already in existence approximately 800 million years after the creation of the universe. At the same time, this unusual galaxy named J2557-3602 was nothing like we've seen before. Its center was so bright that we could actually not even tell the rest of the galaxy apart. In other words, the black hole in the middle was emitting so much light that it was overshadowing the entire galaxy around it, completely making it invisible. And this is why we don't even know what the shape of it looks like. But then the scientists had to determine, is this really a quasar or could it still be some sort of an unusual star? And so they had to use the star movement data from the famous Gaia telescope by ESA to try to discover if there was any motion of this object. And they discovered that this object was not moving. It was basically just still in the night skies as if it was really, really far away, which it of course is, and at the same time being the brightest such quasar we've ever discovered. So let's compare it to something you might be able to imagine. In this case, we're going to use an object we're all familiar with, the moon. Now, if we were to go back to Earth and take a look at the brightness of the full moon in the middle of the night, it would be pretty bright. You can usually easily navigate around the beach, around the forest, around really anywhere, just using the night lights from the moon. And although it's not overwhelming, it is still pretty bright. Now, when it comes to this particular black hole, if we were to place it in the middle of our own galaxy at a distance of just over 27,000 light years away from our own planet, we would actually see something in the night skies that would be about 10 times brighter than the moon. 
And so let's try to imagine this by giving the moon some brightness. And this is sort of what you would see in the night skies, except that the actual size would be much smaller. It would only be a point, but a very, very bright point. And the other relatively dangerous thing about this point would be that it would be emitting a tremendous amount of X-rays and possibly even gamma rays pointing everywhere in the galaxy, including, of course, our own solar system. And all this dangerous ionizing radiation would most likely prevent formation of any life on Earth. So in that sense, any galaxy that possesses such a black hole could actually struggle with creating anything worthy of life. Unless, of course, there is a type of life we don't yet understand. But the amount of radiation created in there is just absolutely mind-blowing. But at the same time, the scientists who discovered this particular quasar, which by the way stands for quasi-star, as I mentioned previously, sometimes they're confused for stars. And so it's sort of like a star, but not really. But to make sure that it's a quasar, and to make sure that the brightness was actually natural and not increased by anything, they had to also look for things like gravitational lensing that you see right here. So if there was another galaxy in front of this one, it could have actually given it a boost of luminosity. So maybe that's what we're observing. And to try to determine this, they used various bands of frequencies to try to see if there's another galaxy in front of it. And well, there was nothing. It was just a single spot. Which of course suggests that this particular galaxy is roughly around 20 billion masses of the sun, around three times more than Poehi or M87, whose image we've taken in 2019, while at the same time being something like 700 million million times brighter than our own sun. While also being the fastest growing black hole we've discovered that seems to be absorbing matter ridiculously fast, eating up up to about one mass of the sun every two days. So in other words, in about a year or so, it consumes 180 to maybe 200 masses of the sun. Now obviously, underneath all of this brightness and underneath all of this layer of energy, we'll discover just the same thing we always discover. A large, massive, and very powerful giant that's growing pretty fast. But remember, this is about 12.8 to 12.9 billion years ago. So this is what this black hole was like in the past. Today it might be completely different, but what's important here is that it creates a kind of a mystery. We don't really understand how these black holes can get so, so massive so quick after the creation of the first galaxies, while at the same time having such voracious appetites and being able to eat up so many masses of the sun pretty much every single day. Now it's possible that it was a result of some sort of a collision between galaxies or maybe several um, really big black holes came together and brought a lot of mass with them. But we don't really know, we just know that this is definitely the record holder for the brightest so far and as I mentioned it would be so bright if we were to place it in our own galaxy that it would overshadow our own moon, it would be one of the brighter stars in the night skies and also visible in the daylight while at the same time being super dangerous, producing a lot of dangerous radiation. But on that note, that's all I wanted to mention about this black hole, because we haven't really discovered anything new in the last year or so. And also, there haven't really been any new discoveries of even brighter black holes than this. Once we discover something, I'll make sure to talk about it, so do subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.